the country. The greetings, uh, greetings, Mali. Not like the country, though. M A double. You know, how, you know how I do this. Hey, everybody, throw your fist up for a minute so I get this selfie. M A double This is our brother Ronnie right here. You're getting a selfie on. So you're welcome to Tanzania. I uh, hope all, all of you, you do speak Kiswahili. Jumbo. Teach us a little bit. Yeah. Oh, we are. Karibu means welcome. Karibu. Karibu means Karibu. my pleasure. So it depends on how you're using Karibu. Karibu can mean thank you, uh, my pleasure, yeah. or Karibu means welcome. Asante, that, that means thank you. Asante sana, thank you very much. We mostly use Jumbo, like hey, hello, how are you? Jumbo is a short form of who Jumbo. It's been chopped that way. Jumbo because it has no gender, has no age, has nothing. So it fits for everyone. That's why we use Jumbo. Perfect. So anywhere you go in town, you because you look same as I do, there will, lots of people try to talk to you in Kiswahili. Yeah. And once you say, ah, oh, I don't speak Kiswahili, then we'll say Jumbo. Yeah. If you go to a really, um, Good Kiswahili, the word means Pujambo. It's like saying, hello, how are you? Now we're heading to Arusha. It's really dark. You cannot see far. On our, as I am standing right hand side, is Kilimanjaro, left hand side is Mount Meru. And if weather is good tomorrow, you may see both of the peaks from Arusha, Meru and Kilimanjaro. Weather permitting. Um, driving time from here to Arusha, it may yeah, take so one hour. Flying for two days. It's already <laughs> night and uh, I'm not expecting for us to yeah, hit the heavy traffic jam getting into Arusha. The hotel, the Maybe place we're staying is really in town. Time changes. You um, the time changes. If you're very energetic, if you want to walk around, you can do that. Yeah. It's already late, but... So, uh, did you get the... Uh, um, about yeah, tomorrow's yeah. program, we have the, the itinerary. Um, just let you know the time that we'll be starting tomorrow morning, and uh, then we'll start learning the rich history of right. Tanzania. Call me on once you get it. Send me a text once you get it. Where Tanzania comes from, why we have the name That's Tanzania the today. Okay, so we'll all learn that I tomorrow. Okay. Used to be Tanganyika, Tanzania, and uh, we don't know what's next. Now, yeah, but that was in the that was in the um, weather in, uh, Seattle. It's as you have seen, it's really windy. Yeah, it's it's the beginning hard. of the short rains. Normally, it's supposed to be already winter. raining, but because of the climate change, we had very short rain this year. I did. The I last rain was in day. May. Yeah, it, uh, so we, all we this time the, it was really dry. Uh, so it may be cold and a, a little bit showery in the morning, but it won't be raining the whole day. Dressing code, we don't have a lot of uh, rules about it. You can dress that the, the dress that you're comfortable with. If it's cold, you can put a jacket. If it's not cold, you can wear whatever you want. Um, moving in town, since we're staying in the heart of Arusha town, moving in town is very easy if you don't take valuables with you, like uh, money, cameras that you can lock in the uh, hotel room. You can only take amount of money that you want to use. Don't bring all the cash with you. But you, rap, you you're right. in you're in town. Town like all, all other towns of the world, something can it's never happened before. This is just for okay. the safety information. Nice because nice. if I will not mention that if anything happened, you say nobody told you. <coughs> so then it's my fault. It's better for you to know that you're in the city, you're in town of Arusha about 2.5 billion people so there's people looking for daily bread that should not be the daily bread eh? yes. so uh, you can take a, a money with you uh, you can take your camera valuables but if you go by yourself it's not a big deal for you because they will always consider you like our fellow Africans uh, food, you can eat everything that you want to eat, but just be aware that you're eating something that you're not used to. So sometimes 
your stomach, your body will react. Don't think that oh, I'm eating something very dirty and not clean. It's only because you're eating new thing or new food. I was in Germany in 1998, 1999, and in Germany they have sauerkraut, it's cabbage. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love eating that thing, but it never loves me. So I was having like stomach upset every now and then. And I keep on eating it for three months. After three months, my body accepted it. So every time the friends from Germany comes and ask me what we bring for you, sauerkraut. So I have like five tins at home. Sauerkraut? Yeah. So cabbage. It's a cabbage yeah, slice yeah. and then being soaked in a salt. So I so that I'm just giving you an example. So if you get a stomach upset on and you also taking malaria pills? Yes. Please, if you're taking malaria pills, take enough liquid water. But I don't know what is how it's been explained to you by doctors. Do not take medicine before you have eaten something. You better eat something before taking medicine because that's chemical. And I don't want your body to start digesting chemical before. It may make you dizzy, it makes you sick, it makes you weak. So it's better for you to eat something and then you take the medicine. Um, so where do you get the malaria pills to buy? Yeah, we have pharmacies. You can buy there. And uh, do not be astonished if you get the prices cheaper than Paco. Here we don't take it until I'm sick. So the prices are low. Uh, and we don't we don't really take uh, malaria pills uh, because we don't really suffer from it. And uh, just for the information, last time I had malaria is five years ago, and I tried several times to expose myself to where there is a malaria zone, red zone. I didn't get malaria, so that means the malaria is it's getting. Anyway, I have immunity. Don't do what I'm doing. Be careful. Okay, so the best of us, are you suggesting that we go to the pharmacy and get some pills to take? Yeah, that's yeah, it yeah, that, on, yeah, that schedule. It, it depends on what you want. Yeah, which, 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 the thick, yeah, the thick paper. Mm -hmm. one of the mm -hmm. pharmacies in the region. Yeah, I just want to read it up to the group. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, prophylax, malaria, you can get it. Okay. But if you're taking the medicine, follow what I say. Eat something before you take it. Um, tomorrow we'll be visiting the uh, we'll be visiting the Natu museum, natural museum, we'll be with Maasai Art Market. Ah uh, yes, and also the Declaration Museum. And good thing is that all these places, except of uh, Arusha Declaration Museum, we need the bus to go there, but uh, the Maasai Place, the market is a walking distance from the hotel. We can take the bus, but we can also walk down the street to get to the Maasai market place. That's perfect, a little walk is good. Um, yeah, tomorrow uh, is when we try and do all the shopping and all the moving around and, and, and because uh, you know, Sunday we the got good that. The thing is, since it's not far from the hotel, we can all go together and if you find like, now I want to go back, it's just a straight line back to the hotel. Yeah, you need to learn a word, Hapana Asante. Hapana Asante. Hapana. No, thank you. Because we have a lot of people in town who will try to sell you things and some of them will try to push you. So you just say Hapana Asante, that means no thank you. If it's getting uh, very intense, is they're trying to push, then you used Sitaki. It's not used a lot by locals in terms of Kiswahili because sitaki is a somehow rude word to stop somebody pushing what he wants you to do. Sitaki means fed up, I don't want anymore. Um, will we have lunch is going to be at the hotel for money? Uh, lunch is just wherever we can, you know, do lunch. But uh, dinner is, you know, we just dinner, you know, we just pick somewhere for dinner. Okay. But the main thing is just letting people know that's the different um, things we're doing for the daytime, and then 
Sunday we have that natu natu uh, national park. Okay, um, I asked because in the previous tours we go to the places mostly where the African people are running the restaurants, the hotels. So we'll see how it works. We are not really fixed with program. We can always change slightly. So I will repeat this again tomorrow because two of the family members are already in Arusha in the hotel. You are traveling as individuals, but you are also traveling as a family. And the family style is a not easy thing. Sometimes you don't you do things not because you want to, but you do it because it's the family thing. Sometimes one of our family member is late and you already want to go. Just remember that you're in a family. Since you're in a family, you need to do the things not in the rules, but you do it in a family way by waiting of others, helping each other. Because I will may forget my jacket. It's very helpful. It's very uh, easy for you to pick it and bring it. If I'm slow and you're fast, you can slow down so that you wait for me. If I'm taking photos and you want, you don't want to take photos, you can wait for me because I'm the family member. So sometimes people get irritated and ask, why is this person doing this? We are all humans. <laughs> we cannot be equal. The only way we can be equal is to take the weakness of the other person to be your weakness so that you don't get angry on the person. Do not produce waste products. So, I'm sorry, I will get to it. The heavy part of your life is the productive part of your life. The part that you are upset and angry and not happy, that is the worst product of your life. So do not produce worst product. Sit. Okay, can I? You are having a question? Oh, it's with part. Ah, you want me to close the window? No, it's not all the way. Good. Thank you. Um, said that you have today. It's not the Tanzania that you used to read in the books. The Africa we have today is not the Africa that you have been reading or knowing about Africa. It's a little bit different. I have been guiding since 2001. When I was at the very beginning, I was surprised when they, I speak German and I'm guiding a lot of German groups. The first thing they will come here is not dusty, it's green, it's nice. They will say, no, this is not the Africa that we know. The Africa should be very hot and very dusty. So when you, when you know that before or you have that in your mind, it should be slightly different. Because some parts are very green, yes, some parts are dry and dusty. But it's not dry and dusty because people want it to be that way. It's nature. Is there something you can use? Is there like a hat with a net or something to offset the dust? What do they do? Uh, we don't do anything about dust. I've grown up in a village where we had kettles. So you can be in the middle of like 100, a few hundred cows. And you take the dust. It's minerals. <laughs> But I'm sure for this tour you're not getting to very dusty places. Arusha National Park is the park that we're going to. It's dusty, not as you think. It's been raining some parts, so it's not very dusty. You go after here to Zanzibar, it's sunny, it's not dusty at all. Maybe the only dust is what you're getting now because of the windstorm. Um, language, we use Kiswahili. We all speak Kiswahili. That's our national language. Out of 120 tribes plus, there's more than 120 tribes, and every tribe is having its own mother tongue. But we all been connected with 
Kiswahili. Kiswahili is a mixture of five languages known English, Bantu, Arabic, uh, German, and a little bit of Greek words in it. Yes, because we was before the Greek, uh, uh, before we was the Arab colony, Arabs were here traders, yeah. and then the Germans came in, colonized this part of Africa, called it Dodgers Africa, part of Tanzania, part of Kenya, part of Uganda, was under German colony. After the World War I, the German lost, and the British took over, and they called it British Mandate Territory. So the Queen, who recently passed, she was ruling this part of Africa from Britain. Lived like that, and the British are the ones who brought in schools, teach people how to read and write. The Germans were just using them for what? So after the British, we had our independence in 1961. The former British Prime Minister Julius Nyerere becomes the first president of, Africa, of Tanzania, and then he said, "No, we don't want to use Kiswai, uh, English or German." change will have our own language. He is a teacher by profession and then he started, he is the, the person who emphasized the, the use of Kiswahili. And then the Kiswahili was being taught in the villages where I grown up. There was evening classes for the old people to go and learn Kiswahili. Today, Kiswahili is most of East African countries. Kenya, Tanzania itself, Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, South Sudan, Mozambique, and part of Malawi. So currently we're using Kiswahili as the official language in the parliament and African parliament and also East African parliament. What about the law school? What about like law school and business school? The school are using but Kiswahili and English. Oh, both languages, so you, right? So you choose. So, we will know Beautiful thing. <laughs> so, if you learn or if you speak Kiswahili, your life will be very easy. Yeah? I think in the in the books that Bomani produced, it's Kiswahili. Ah uh, yes, uh, what I have is a digital book. Um, okay, in your digital book, you yes, can start uh, in Kiswahili. Yes, I send it to um, everyone. So, yes. so they'll see the language translation. Yeah. And if you, I will be with you from. From now until, tomorrow until Tuesday, right? Tuesday morning. I mean, it's like Monday. Yeah, I Monday. was supposed to be with you all the way to Zanzibar, but uh, I have to stay in Arusha. Yeah. Have some things that I have to be there for. It. Yeah, yeah. So you have to take care of some family business. I told me you now we got it, and I'll, I'll make sure you guys are good. But we have actually, even if I'm going with you to Zanzibar. We still have a Zanzibar, Zanzibar guide. We will have a guide because we're trying to promote the tourism in Zanzibar and the mainland. So then finally we thought Eugene said, okay, let's accept this. We'll use the same guide that we're using in Zanzibar and he's going to be with you. So here you're learning Kiswahili. When you get to Zanzibar, Kiswahili is slightly different. They speak more uh, Arabic Kiswahili. Mm. Because Arabic the, Kiswahili. Yeah. You have, to, you have to break that down. Don't, you don't really hear the word Inshallah here. When you get to Zanzibar and Dar es Salaam, you hear a lot of people saying Inshallah means my God wish. So if somebody say Inshallah to you, you, you don't hear that. I Inshallah. I do. So you don't hear it here because we, we are not using it. We don't have a lot of Arabs here. I think she wanted. She she wanted if, if the Tanzania president is from Zanzibar Island. The lady. Ah, you're talking uh, of the president. The madam the current, president. The current president. Yeah, she is from Zanzibar. Actually, she 
was born and raised and started working in Zanzibar. And because of sharing power, equal, equality, I don't know. I don't have good words to explain about. So always who is running for the presidency, if he is a, a man, the female should be the vice president. And she was the vice president of John Pombe Makumu, who passed last year. And she took over that position and she is the president. Don't ask me if, it's good or, if she is good or not, I don't. So she is ruling the country currently. She is the president. And she have, cannot be re-elected because she's a woman? No, no, no. She is going to be re-elected. She is going to be re-elected because of the system. All of the all of their government and, always get re-elected. And, 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 and you know the thing is not a man or a woman. It's who you are. If you're capable, if you're capable, people will re-elect you. Uh, I said before, I don't know if she's a good person or not a good person. Because I am one person. I have my point of views. And in Tanzania, we are 61 million people. So I'm only one person out of one, uh, 61 million people. To me, to me, there are things that I'm not happy with. But I'm sure lots of people, including my own father, is very happy with her. Not because she is, she is a, is a, a woman president, it's only because of how things have been done. In terms of health and education, she is very good. In terms of international relations, she is very good. But if you come to the some few things, other few things, like losing the power all day in the whole day, black out of the whole city for the whole day, I'm not happy. So yeah, she, well, she have kept tourism going strong. <laughs> I say, like, having no power in the whole city for the whole day, I'm not happy with it. Because there is a reason why we don't have power. And as the president, you should. So if one city in the entire country doesn't get power, it can be the president, like, is there a local leader for this city? There's, there is a reason why there is no power. Right, but is there a local leader for this city? Every city has got a regional commissioner. But the regional commissioner is under the umbrella, umbrella of the president. Right. The president is in our country is the final say. So. Is it a political reason why you don't have power? Uh, it's not political, but. Uh, it, it's, it's popular in a lot of countries, unfortunately. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a system of leadership. During the time of John Pombe Magufuli, when power went off. If, sorry, if the power is going to be off for one hour, the power company should inform everyone in the country that tomorrow in this certain part of the country we will not have power for this number of hours because we're doing repair for it, so, so, so. But nowadays, the power is off from 7 in the morning until 7 in the evening with no information. Then you're killing the, you're killing the economy because people cannot things if there's no power. I am in my office, there's no power, I shut down the computer, I go home and tomorrow morning I see emails from my clients complaining that I did not answer the, 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 the emails on time, but I cannot see the email because there's no power. Okay, that's, that's, that's just one part, don't take care of it, don't think of it, you will have Back up, uh, back up at the hotel, so we don't need to worry about it. But well, these things are popular in different countries, also. Yeah. So, um, so. Instead of 
trying to fight with the political leaders, it's better you keep quiet to save your fingers. Yeah, Unless reason. otherwise that's you lose your fingers. That's so, so you better, you better. So, so if you love your fingers, you better shut them off.